All right, right now I am nature journaling in the rain. It was gonna be a rainy afternoon, but I decided to come out here and nature journal anyways. I'm gonna test out some used gear, gear that I'm familiar with, and some sort of new setup. So I am going to be mostly using an umbrella. An umbrella is super useful for nature journaling in the rain, and it's raining just enough today where I wouldn't be able to be out here with my regular paper. Um, I definitely like to push the edges of my materials and see what is actually possible. And so I have tested my regular Stillman and Burn sketchbook out on days um, pretty close to this. And um, instead, today I brought my waterproof um, paper from right in the rain. So this is a kit that you've seen me use before. This is a little um, field um, journal from right in the rain. And I'm using this large rubber band. These are super useful to hold a pencil in here. And this is the Prismacolor Ebony. So it's basically a graphite type pencil. Works great on this paper. I also have the right in the rain pin. So this pin works in the rain, works on wet right in the rain paper and is made by that same company. I have, there's definitely pros and cons to this. Might not be worth the $25 um, that it costs when you can use a golf pencil um, that works quite well. I'm also um, not wearing synthetic clothing today. Um, synthetic clothing is great for completely blocking out water, but wool is partially water resistant as well. You'll notice here that my umbrella makes a ton of sound on that bush um, because it's in synthetic material, but listen to the wool is a lot quieter. So it's raining just enough today where I would still probably want an umbrella, um, but I would be okay with the wool as well. And it's also great insulation. And I'm gonna test out these materials. I've got my water bottle um, just hooked on to my belt or the side of my pants with a carabiner. Very useful trick. So I'm just going with basically this light kit so it's easier for me to move around, um, cover ground, and just be more light. I'm also wearing some big uh, rain boots. And um, getting all of that stuff dialed in that works best for you is going to really help you get out in Nature Journal a lot more. Oh. I think I just heard a song sparrow. I was literally just studying those at home today. And I do have my binoculars, my Pentax Papilio binoculars protected in here. I probably should have, they're so small and comfortable. I forgot that I was wearing them. I probably should have taken off this um, outer cover before I came out here. Oh, I hear more birds. A lot of times birds aren't really that bothered. Um, by the rain. So I'm gonna find a spot over here to post up and start nature journaling. Did you see that red shoulder hawk fly through? And there was alarm calls from these other birds. There were alarm calls from these other birds right when it, I think there's like a bush hit maybe, or it's either a, um, no, it's either a, a chickadee or a, um, a chickadee or an oak titmouse. I just found this awesome oak tree, so I think I'm gonna come set up here for at least for a little bit. All right, it just started to rain a little bit harder out here. Um, I got my camera set up and I got my umbrella. I'm gonna go ahead and whip it out and start nature journaling here.
it had been a while since I nature journaled with an umbrella. So at first I tried standing up and soon I realized that holding the umbrella with one hand was making it hard for me to do other stuff with my hands. One handed nature journaling is kind of hard. So I decided to try to stick the umbrella in the back of my jacket and that seemed to work pretty well, but it kind of blocked my vision. So then I adjusted the umbrella and stuck it into the back of my underwear, and that seemed to make it stay up a little bit higher, at least high enough so I could see out the front. Your results may vary depending on what kind of umbrella you have and what type of underwear you use. I got tired of having an umbrella in my underwear and switched to a crouched position which can sometimes work. Here's the page I have so far and you can see that um, I tried to capture the tree over there and a little bit of the scene. The page was getting quite wet, definitely would not have worked my regular paper. I um, got my metadata, um, some quantification, measurement, and description. So covering all the bases so far in the nature journal. And just, you know, it's, it's not super pleasant out right now, but it's definitely doable. So um, and if you come out in nature journal on days, like this enough, I'm telling you start seeing crazy things that you would never see before um, just on regular sunny days. So I'm going to move to a new area and um, try nature journaling um, some more stuff.
So you can see here, you can see here that um, this paper, even uh, you know, underneath the umbrella, is still getting splashed on quite a bit. And even with that much water on it, this pencil, regular graphite pencil, works okay. I would not be able to do that with any kind of ink, not even the so-called right in the rain ink. So I'm telling you, just the pencils are way better. Uh, there's a story someone told me that the U.S. government spent, I don't know, six million dollars developing a, a pen that could be used in outer space, and meanwhile, the Russian, um, the Russian space program used pencils and didn't have to spend the six million dollars developing a pen. Anyways, I have used one of those space pens before, and it definitely does not work very good in wet conditions. It kind of sucks. Um, pencils are way better. They're easy to, easy to sharpen. It's really hard for them to go wrong or to break. If they break in half, then you have two pencils. Um, so pencils combined with this kind of paper are probably about the toughest materials you can get for nature journaling, um, whether it's like with rain or whether it's like dirt or anything like that. Um, this is probably what you want to try. And they have a couple different versions. Um, this one I got at REI but there's some other versions on their website that you can check out. I think there's like a yellow one that's a little bit bigger. That's the one I would use mostly. This size, personally, it, it's great that it fits in my pocket, but other than that, I don't like that small of a size. It makes it way harder for me to draw with because I can't brace it. So my normal sketchbook is big enough that I can like brace it really easily in my elbow. This one's so small. I mean, I have to hold it like on my hand and it just gets kind of hard because you're pushing on it this way and see how my, this hand's only covering it here. You're pushing on it here and it just has a lot of leverage. So the size isn't the greatest, um, but it is convenient. They do even, I think you can buy their paper unbound and you could bind it how you want or put it into a folder or something like that. I think there's some even more waterproof paper that there's some companies um, that are, are making and that are usable even underwater. I might experiment with those at some point, but for right now, this right in the rain paper is working pretty well. And I just want to practice getting out and seeing what kind of nature drilling I can actually do and what materials I actually need on days like today. And I've done some nature drilling in the rain before, but the more you practice something, the more you test it out in the field, the easier it will be. And then all you need to do is just grab your supplies and get out the door and put in some good nature journaling time. So I hope this video helped you. I hope it inspired you to nature journal in slightly more challenging conditions or just inspired you to be a little bit more organized and prepared and um, excited nature journaling whatever conditions you have at home if you can't wait all the way till next week for the next episode of the show check out these two videos here bye